So I know this game doesn't look like much, but it's been one of my favorite gaming experiences all year. So, have you heard about Void Spire Tactics? This is an indie game that I can best describe as a mashup of Final Fantasy Tactics Advance and Divinity Original Sin 2. Maybe if you're coming off a high of the tactical goodness of Baldur's Gate 3, you'd be intrigued. I'll immediately confess, guys, this is like one of those games I probably bought back in like 2018 when my eyes were glazed over in a Steam sale and I saw some massive discount and so I mindlessly bought it. It has sat in my vault for years. Back in the winter of this year, I played for about an hour and then I bounced off. Like, party creation was cool, but the combat felt kind of basic and the exploration was weird and the presentation really got in the way of things and the maps felt big and empty and there wasn't really much of a story besides the fact I got kidnapped onto some strange floating rock thing. But I came back to this game a few weeks ago and the next 14 hours of gameplay fueled my freaking soul because Void Spire really doesn't reveal itself until you kind of just creep over the first hour. The first time you make your own shortcut, you unlock a new class or realize some of the gameplay synergies. From there, it only gets better. There's secrets and side dungeons and a kind of fun interactive crafting system and some of the music really starts to freaking slap. More of the story unfurls, your characters get more customizable, the combat get counters become more varied and complex and challenging, and navigating the environment becomes more of a huh. Think I can use that with this to put that there so I can get over there? It has an old school renaissance style feel of older tabletop role playing games where players feel mastery by knowing and using systems rather than making checks or choices. I really, really, really enjoyed Void Spire Tactics party system. With a fully customizable party of four, you can build the characters however you want. I went with a traditional fighter cleric rogue set up at the beginning, but then slowly evolved into everyone having kind of an elemental damage undertone of water and ice and lightning so I could stun enemies and deal extra damage and create these kind of electrifying water fields. Some of the classes also focus on manipulating the battlefield and your opponents. And as a big fan of Into the Breach, I was so enamored by all of the small intricacies of being able to push foes or disrupt spellcasters from their telegraph fireballs or move allies out of the way of some sort of harmful effect or into the way of your healer's channeled heal spell. And to top it all off, there were some classes I just never delved into, like the armor busting breaker or the gadget deploying uh, machinist. This job system makes it directly inspired to me by games like Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, where you just want to customize your own party of adventurers. But being able to use combat abilities outside of combat to explore and solve puzzles immediately reminded me of the recent games by Larian Studios, even though Void Spire Tactics came out before D Divinity Original Sin 2. I think there's strong parallels here. Like you can use the scout's fire starter ability to light a forge or a campfire, or you can use a freeze skill to freeze water so you can cross an area. And that just kind of gave me this great grin. And it was one of those moments of the game where I went, oh, this is what it's doing. And some of the music is terrific. Like this track here freaking slaps. So shout out to all of the indie music producers. Save one annoying town track, but the rest was really good and fits the retro sci-fi fantasy vibe because the undertone of science fiction and the unique world and lore of Void Spire would just give it another interesting twist to the whole genre. Also, there were some surprising moments of choice in the game um, from the very sort of static of being able to use your combat abilities to trigger combat encounters or sometimes to negotiate with a band of adventurers to deciding how you might interact with certain factions. The characters, writing, and plot were all decent, 
the lore was interesting enough and I kind of enjoyed the gamification of the journal that by using the look action you can slowly build your journal over time and unearth more secrets and knowledge about game mechanics and world lore. And I particularly like that there was a kind of a political battle going on in the background and in the end I appreciated the Ozymandias-esque nature of the eventual villain. But yeah, this game just rocks. New game mode gives you even more races to pick from and ways to modify your play, like varying the difficulty or increasing your XP gain so you can just customize more. But I think I'm going to move on to Horizons Gate, the developer's second sequel and most popular title on Steam. Really, the great weakness of this game is just kind of that final 10% of polish across the board. It's some of the music. It's some of the difficulty spikes. It's kind of a bit of the slow opening to a game that is inherently about deep customization that just requires more time for you to play. Some of the boring looking map design. And then arguably, really kind of the greatest greatest flaw is its price point. $20 Canadian might seem steep to some when you have a game like Stardew that's a few visible dollars cheaper and provides many, 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 many more hours of gameplay and a higher level of polish. But I thought Voidspire to me was worth every penny. So if you're excited by any of this, I strongly encourage you to go out and give it a try. And if you're more curious than excited, maybe just try this out on the upcoming Steam sale. But all in all, Void Spire Tactics is terrific. I couldn't put it down. With less than 300 reviews on Steam at the time of recording in the year 2023 of our Lord, it's a tragedy more folks don't know about it. Because do you ever just boot up a game and lose track of time and spend hours poring over these small, intricate details about a character or a thing or a system and you're just wanting to try another sort of encounter so you can try out a new combo or just get a little more XP so you can get that one more power which then lets you do something else but then you found a cool new sword and so you can think you can change your fighter into some sword enchanting badass and then on and on it goes. That was me in Voidspire. I heartily recommend this game, and I'll see you all when I eventually get around to Horizon's Gate.